Hi everybody, this is Corey, uh, just coming back to you after a long and very, very good holiday season. Uh, very busy for me, I had a lot of waiting, I had to do things like that, but also managed to have a lot of good uh, holiday experiences as well, where I was able to spend some time with the family, we made gingerbread houses, uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, had a little family trip to New York as well, that was uh, fantastic, got to go see the tree in Rockefeller Center. Uh, a few other things like that. So, all in all, a very good holiday season. Uh, I'm coming to you today, uh, partly because I want to share with you some of the things that I got uh, throughout the holiday season that I think might be interesting to you uh, as our listeners uh, for our podcast and for our uh, shows uh, here on the YouTube channel as well. Things that have to do with folklore or magic, things like that. Uh, so I'll get to those in just a second. I want to start, though, with the things in my lap. Uh, you may recognize these are the Haunted Mansion playing cards. Uh, the little Darumadol, which is nicely wrapped up, ready to be shipped. A uh, copy of the book 54 Devils. Uh, and then the Harry Potter History of Magic as well. Uh, all of that was part of our uh, contest that we were doing during the month of December, uh, which closed on December 31st, 2018, so ringing out the old uh, year. We uh, do have a winner, and so I wanted to say congratulations to Abby C., uh, who is our winner for this contest. Uh, she shared around several of our different videos, got uh, multiple entries, and I think that probably helped her in the long run. Uh, and uh, so congratulations, Abby. We really appreciate you sharing uh, New World Witchery with others. Uh, you will be getting this prize pack. We'll be trying to get in touch with you, uh, hopefully, uh, via some sort of social media, I think that we are connected there. Uh, if not, uh, if you happen to see this before we've gotten in touch with you, feel free to send us an email at compassandkey at gmail.com uh, and we'll make sure to get this prize pack in the mail to you soon, all right? So, that takes us to uh, the holiday season and some wonderful gifts from some, some wonderful people over I uh, had a lot of really, really cool stuff kind of come my way. People know me. They know I'm interested in folklore and magic, things like that. So I got lots of stuff related to that. We'll start with these. These are uh, three of the books in a collection of books called the Pantheon Fairy Tale and Folklore Library. Uh, the Pantheon Library basically collects a lot of some of the sort of masterpiece collections or uh, groupings of folklore texts. Uh, from all over the world. They have uh, books that are dedicated to Chinese folklore, they have books dedicated to Japanese folklore, uh, they have books that dedicated to African folklore, to African American folklore, uh, all sorts of different uh, collections and uh, they're all really really interesting. They've recently sort of been re-releasing a lot of them uh, and putting these really cool kind of covers on the front. Uh, the ones that I got, I got uh, a book of Irish folk tales uh, that is edited by Henry Glassy, I don't know if you can see his name there. Um, Glassy is a folklorist that I actually um, have met a couple of times. Uh, he is really famous for doing um, what we call material culture, so things like our architecture and crafts and things like that. Um, one of his best known works is that, but he did a lot of research and work in Ireland as well. Uh, and so he has uh, edited together a collection of Irish folk tales. Got uh, a book called American Indians, Myths and Legends uh, by Richard Erdos and Alfonso Ortiz. Um, now, that one uh, has been released in a couple of different formats, uh, and it's, it's a good collection. It goes over a lot of different tribes, so uh, I know that you have some Navajo legends in there, you have some Okanagan, uh, you have some Algonquin, Cheyenne, um, and that is nice. It actually breaks down the sort of tribal affiliations of each tale. It's not, you know, the most perfect collection of Native American lore to ever exist, but it's a good start. It's a good place to start with, with that lore. Uh, and then I got uh, the Victorian fairy tale book. One of the things that people don't always understand um, when you're dealing with, like, folklore studies uh, is when you talk about fairy tales and folklore, they overlap in a lot of places, but sometimes they're fairly different. Fairy tales, a lot of times folklorists think of those as what got written down. Uh, so you have a lot of literary traditions, and that's why something like Hans Christian Andersen can be considered a fairy tale because he's drawing on folklore, but he wrote down these stories uh, in his own style, in his own idiom, um, and they're very literary creations. Um, there are a lot of authors who did that, especially during the 19th century. Uh, the Victorian era was a real flowering for a lot of different uh, folklore and fairy tales, uh, and so you have a lot of really, really neat uh, folklore and fairy tales that show up in here. You've got um, The Reluctant Dragon by Kenneth Graham. 
Uh, you've got The Goblin Market by, uh, by Christina Rossetti. Um, you've got Browning's Pied Piper of Hamill, which I really, really love. I'm a big, I don't know if anybody knows this about me, I really love the story of the Pied Piper. It's one of my favorite stories um, for a lot of reasons. Um, so lots of different stuff in here. Uh, Barry's, Jan Barry's Peter Pan and Kensington Gardens. There's a big chunk of that in here as well. Um, it's great. It's just a nice little collection uh, uh, edited by Michael Patrick Hearn. Uh, really, really nice little collection of folk tales there. The whole series, there's, I mean, there's easily almost two dozen books in the series, so this is just the beginnings of what will probably become um, a very uh, expensive and very heavy collection of books, um, but I'm very, very glad to have those. Uh, and those were uh, gifts from various in-laws, uh, and of course they sort of knew uh, knew me well enough to, to, to get those for me. But from my wonderful wife, uh, I got a couple of really interesting things. Uh, I got, she got me a couple of boxes of uh, matches of all things. These are just kind of uh, strike and light matches. Um, and they're not specifically witchy, but I, I can't help but, you know, think of them as being a little bit witchy, a little bit magical. I think that's kind of cool. You know, they use them to light candles. Um, and, you know, they're, they're fun. I love them. They're, they're cute. Uh, the other thing she got me, which is really kind of neat, uh, she got me tarot cards. Now, I'm not a tarot reader, necessarily. Um, I can fiddle around with tarot, and I like tarot fairly well. Uh, these, however, have some additional significance. They're kind of neat, because they are Steven Universe uh, tarot cards, and they're only the Major Arcana. Uh, they don't have the entire set uh, of the tarot cards. They don't do all the Minor Arcana uh, in there, but you do have a lot of really, really neat uh, different images from the Steven Universe uh, animated show uh, that are associated with these different sorts of uh, archetypes from the tarot uh, as well. Um, so you can see Rose Rose winds up being used a couple of different times for a couple of different things. She's the sun and she's the empress. Uh, Pearl represents the hanged man, which I think is a very clever uh, interpretation of that. Uh, strength is one of my favorites. I don't know if I can find that. Oh, there's... Uh, the Lovers, which is Greg and Rose, but there's also, they have a couple of variations on some of them. So with The Lovers, you actually have, uh, yeah, they're there, uh, Ruby and Sapphire as well from that series. Uh, if you don't know the series, this probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you, um, but they're, the series is fantastic. The series is this kind of um, neo-futuristic fairy tale uh, Stephen himself is a 14-year-old boy who is just kind of learning about his past and his history. Uh, his mother was this this sort of materialized uh, alien being called a crystal gem. Um, and there's a whole mythology that goes with this. Uh, but she uh, had to give up her existence so that he could come into existence. And he is struggling with what that means. His father is human. His mother is this sort of gem alien. He has these three basically ants who are also his caretakers who are also crystal gems. Um, beautiful story, lots of really, really neat storytelling, very emotionally resonant. My wife and I love it. We love watching it with our kids. Um, great characters. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorite kind of quirky characters, Peridot, uh, who's the hermit. Makes a lot of sense. She's very tech obsessed, likes to kind of be left alone. And then I love Stephen with his, he has sort of a pet lion um, named Lion, uh, who, uh, if you know the strength card, this, this really plays very, very well with that imagery. So... Love getting these tarot cards. They're so perfect uh, on so many levels for me. Uh, just really shows she was paying attention and uh, really thoughtful about that. So uh, loved it. It was great. Uh, can't can't be happier with with those. Those are great. And then uh, I also got a couple of other books um, that I think would be of interest to folks here. One of them. This is not explicitly a witchcraft book, and it's not really explicitly a folklore book uh, in and of itself, but. Uh, hits a lot of those bases. So this is Anthony Bourdain's Hungry Ghosts, um, which was written, it was sort of collected material, collected by Anthony Bourdain and put together by a fellow named Joel Rose, who collaborated with Bourdain on a couple of other things. Um, they use a lot of dark horse horror comic artists to complete uh, this. It is a graphic novel. Uh, if you don't know that, it is a graphic novelization um, of a series of stories. It's, it's set up as a uh, a challenge or a dare where a group of chefs uh, have catered a banquet for a notorious gangster and he invites them to play this famous sort of Japanese samurai folklore game uh, where everybody tells ghost stories and then extinguishes a candle in the next room and looks in the mirror to see if, um, if they've been replaced by a demon from the process of telling the story. Um, it's 
very, very cleverly done. Very, very fun, interesting read. You get uh, just kind of a handful of the stories uh, as the chefs go around and, and share their stories, which each have a little bit to do with food um, and a lot to do with um, sort of ghosts and demons and spirits and things like that. So it's a beautiful piece of folklore. Um, it's not just situated in Japanese culture. Uh, there are some Japanese tales in here, obviously, but there's also uh, a few tales that go outside of that, too, and it's, it's very, very cleverly done. I'm a big horror comics fan, so this was a, a sort of a perfect gift for me, and I, I really loved it uh, immensely. Burned through it in a day. It was, it was so, just so engaging. And then I also got uh, a book I've been sort of uh, holding on to for uh, a while on my wish list, which is the Oxford Illustrated History of Witchcraft and Magic. This is uh, edited by Owen Davies. Uh, he's not the sole author represented here. There's a number of really excellent scholars uh, represented in this book, uh, focusing on different aspects of witchcraft. They cover ancient witchcraft, they cover contemporary uh, religious witchcraft, so things like Wicca get addressed in here. Um, but they also just cover uh, areas of magic as well, so they'll talk about sort of the history of the Malayas and Alphacarum, right? Uh, or they have uh, sections on the witch trials as well, um, and sort of different aspects of witchcraft history. They have uh, some nice sort of illustrated sections, great essays that go along with it. It's actually thinner than I expected it to be. Uh, you can you know, tell it's sort of a thinner book. Uh, a lot of the Oxford books that um, I have encountered are kind of enormous books. Um, I've actually got a couple chapters in an upcoming Oxford Handbook of American Folklore that I did, and um, from what I can tell, it's going to be easily a 900-page book, so very, very enormous. So I'm a little surprised this was as short as it was, um, but it's dense. It's very information-dense, um, and it's so far been a really very good read. I'm not burned through it in a day. I'm uh, still working my way through it, but it's a good book. In the sort of treat yourself category, uh, this is this was kind of a Christmas gift to myself in that I ordered it uh, as soon as it was available for pre-order on Amazon, um, and uh, it was just instantly at the top of my list. Uh, this is Beesom Stang and Sword by Christopher Oropello and Tara Love McGuire. So uh, Chris and Tara have written this really, really Interesting, excellent book. Uh, I did a full review of it on the website, which you can read. Uh, I'll link to that in the show notes. It's great. It talks about their practice. It talks about how to situate witchcraft in sort of a local context, which is phenomenally well done. Um, gets into kind of where their tradition springs from, uh, and then sort of how that adapts uh, across boundaries. So, you know, you, you don't have to be an initiate of their tradition to get something out of this, nor does this book provide you initiation to their tradition. But it sets you on a path to find sort of your own uh, place in that broader spectrum of traditional witchcraft. It's a very good book. Uh, again, I ordered it kind of as soon as it was available for pre-order, uh, and it happened to come in in December. Uh, I got a, uh, another copy of it as well, and we did a giveaway with that one. But uh, this this one, this is sort of going to be my permanent copy, and eventually I'm going to uh, stalk Chris and Tara down. I happen to run into him a few times a year. Um, a different events, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna track you guys down and get you to sign this. Um, so I'm very, very, very happy to have that. So, so that was it for my holiday stuff. Um, got a lot of great gifts. Really, really thankful for all of it. Um, people did a great job. They, they, I think I'm either really easy to shop for or bizarrely hard to shop for in terms of uh, getting new things. Um, oh, you know, books are always a winner, obviously, but uh, it was. It was really neat to get a lot of cool folklore stuff that's kind of uh, skirting sort of the metaphysical or the magical as well, um, if not directly addressing it. And it was just, it was a great, um, great Christmas on that end of things. Not that the holiday is all about what you get, but we, we get stuff. So I wanted to share with you guys some of the things that I got. I'll let you know how some of these things are, especially that um, Oxford history of uh, witchcraft and magic. Uh, I'll let you guys know that. I already reviewed Bees of Saying a Sword. Um, highly recommend Anthony Bourdain's uh, uh, Hungry Ghosts as well. And uh, if you like Stephen Universe, check out those Stephen Universe tarot cards. They have uh, those for sale uh, online. I'll put a link in the show notes in that too. Uh, okay, the final thing. We rang out the old year with a contest. We're going to ring in the new year with a contest. Uh, this contest is brought to us by one of our Patreon supporters and one of our, our very good friends, Kat. Uh, now, Kat uh, is the proprietor of Detura Dreamings, uh, which is an Etsy shop where she makes hand-bound 
uh, journals, as well as a few other things like sketchbooks and things like that too. Um, they're really, really beautiful and they have lots of interesting kind of themes sort of applied to them. Um, and I'll start by saying that if you are uh, a New World Witchery fan, um, if, you, if you're a member of our Patreon supporters, you already know this because it's been in our newsletters a few times, um, between uh, November and January 31st uh, of 2019, you can get 15% off of anything that you order from Datura Dreamings um, with the code NWW15. Uh, so again, NWW15 uh, through the Datura Dreamings Etsy shop will get you 15% off of your order uh, with her. But she also provided us with a couple of really, really uh, cool sample journals uh, that I want to share with you. I, I love them in the wrapping because she wraps them so nicely. I, I hate to, to take the wrapping off. I did have to obviously sort of break the seal of the wrapping uh, to get into it. I'm going to try and rewrap them again uh, when I'm done. Uh, before I ship them out, just so that they stay in pristine condition. She sent us two, uh, two items. Uh, one is a full-sized journal, and one is more of a sketchbook, and you can see uh, this one, the full-sized journal, is a Krampus-themed journal. So uh, it's got uh, sort of these pictures of Krampus all over them. Beautiful sort of cloth-bound material. There are these uh, lovely sort of metal embossed edges here as well. She does the, the marble papers, at the, the end papers. Uh, and then it's just a, a journal inside blank journal that you could turn into uh, who knows what, right? You could use it uh, to turn it into just about anything. Uh, I'm really, really, really uh, thrilled to be able to offer that. Uh, and then sort of in addition to that, she is sending, uh, she sent this beautiful uh, little mini doodle book, uh, is what she called it, I think. Um, and it's just to sort of keep track of notes and thoughts and things like that. It's got this beautiful... Uh, sort of intricate blue and white uh, tree branch. So it's got this kind of water and, and forest theme. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous work hat. Um, and so uh, those are both going to be part of the contest. I'll probably throw in uh, a couple of uh, oils. We've got a nice kind of like money, prosperity, attracting oil uh, that we make that uh, I'll include with uh, the winners of this. Uh, and then uh, we've got a couple of other oils uh, that we'll include as well. Um, so you can win. The, the, the main things are these books. And uh, we're going to do uh, two drawings, or two, two winners, uh, the, the sort of grand prize, uh, which is going to be the, the Krampus journal uh, with a couple of oils to go with it. Uh, and then there'll be sort of this, the, the runner-up, uh, which is the doodle book uh, with a couple of oils as well, and maybe a few other little items thrown in the package too. Uh, so what do you have to do to win these? Um, there are uh, three things that you can do. Uh, this is kind of all about being New Year, New witch, Witchcraft, New witch, New Year, New Witchery uh, sort of contest. Uh, one, if you're a Patreon supporter, automatically you get an entry. That's, that's the rule. That's how it always works. So if you are supporting us on Patreon, uh, anywhere from the $1 level to the $20 level or up, uh, you automatically get an entry to any contest we do. So uh, you've got an entry, good to go there. All right, the other things you can do, uh, you can comment on this post this, uh, either the, the blog post that goes along with this video, this video directly. Uh, you can comment on the Facebook post where we share this, the Twitter post where we share this, or even the Instagram post where we share this. Uh, and we want to know, what was your favorite witchy book that you read in the past year? Uh, was there a favorite witchy read, a book that made a, a big impact on you? Um, is it changing your practice for the coming year? Like, what was the impact of that book? Why do you recommend it? So tell us the name of the book, who wrote it, uh, and then why, why did you like it so much? So that's uh, the second way you can enter. And then the third way that you can enter, uh, share your witchy goals with us. We're, you know, looking back at the reads that you had the past year, uh, what was influencing you. We want to, going forward, what are your witchy goals? Uh, are you going to be starting any new practices? Um, do you uh, have a desire to sort of recommit to the existing practices you have? How are you going to do that? What are you going to do to go about that? Especially if you have things like magical self-care rituals, ways that you can sort of re-up your practice a little bit, uh, or that you can sort of take care of yourself and make sure that you have what you need, magically speaking, um, to take care of, of you and yours. Um, are you going to be trying to learn something new as a part of your witchcraft? Are you beginning a new tradition? Are you pursuing a new path? Um, we want to hear about that. We'd be really, really interested in that. Uh, so you can comment, uh, again, on the blog post where this is shared, this particular YouTube video. You can comment on our Facebook, uh, Twitter, or Instagram shares of this contest video as well. 
Um, so up to three entries there that you can get. Uh, Patreon supporter, what books did you love the past year uh, in terms of witchy reads? Uh, and then what are you uh, planning for the coming year in terms of witchy goals? Um, this one has a little tighter of a timeline. You have until midnight on January 11th to get this into us. At midnight Eastern Standard Time, uh, United States Eastern Standard Time uh, on January 11th to get your name in half of these uh, two really, really awesome uh, journals. Uh, and then uh, do remember we do announce these winners, so make sure if you have a name that uh, you don't want us to share uh, in the video or, or uh, when we announce the winner, um, make sure you let us know if you want us to use a pseudonym or something like that. Um, and then make sure that you're watching the YouTube channel for these announcements. We tend to announce the contests via the YouTube channel now, uh, and we announce them elsewhere too, but uh, we want to make sure people know that they're, they've been selected uh, as a winner for a specific contest. So. Uh, that's really it. I just kind of wanted to pop in and share a few of these things with you all. Um, we're so happy to have you watching us. Please do like, share, subscribe, uh, spread around the love on New World Witch. We really appreciate it when you do that. Uh, it means a lot to us because it gets the word out about us. Um, and we want people to find us. We want people to, to actually get something out of, out of uh, the show and out of the website and everything too. So um, the more you share us, the, the more people we reach, the, the better we can be too. So. Uh, we appreciate that, uh, and that's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching, uh, and we'll talk to you again soon.